politicians willing to step up and take the lead. And that's part of our political system in a democracy, that the politicians tend to reflect public opinion. So what we're talking about is trying to increase public understanding of the unfairness of our policy toward Israel and the Palestinians. Um, did you hear... And the danger. Okay. Did you hear about what uh, Seymour Hirsch had reported, that there was a meeting uh, in the vice president's office to um, like make two or three uh, Iranian-looking boats and have some of our SEALs in Iranian uh, military uniform uh, to actually start shooting in a, uh, uh, at some of these ships that go through the uh, uh, Strait of Hormuz. Now, that was not approved, but uh, I mean, with Seymour Hirsch reporting it, you might, you know, we might give it uh, a little bit of credibility here. A lot that, of credibility. Seymour Hirsch. Okay. The, so, so I mean, Albert what, what kind of government we have here that they are even, I know that, that, you know, this thing was not approved, but at least to have, uh, that they had discussed it. You know, like, let's start a war with Iran by... Though that was like one of the ideas being thrown out in that meeting. Is that the kind of government we have? I mean, is it that silly? Well, uh, if you read the history of our civil war, uh, you'll find that the government in Washington uh, more or less provoked uh, the South Carolinians into firing on Fort Sumter, realizing that if, uh, they fire, if South Carolina fired on a U.S. fort, that it would firm up northern resolve to fight to keep the Union together. Uh, I think that Franklin Roosevelt probably felt back in 1940-41 that it would take something like the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor to get American public opinion out of its isolationism uh, that it had for many years. Uh, presidents have always, uh, I think, looked at how they got public opinion on their side and, of course, since the innovation of the CIA, uh, we have done a lot of secret things to provoke other countries into doing things that would justify or at least justify us taking some action. You know. So you think that our own government would actually conspire to kill its own citizens? Not to kill its own citizens. They, they would conspire in the belief that they were helping our own citizens by having some act occur which would give us an excuse to attack Iran. Uh, they believe what they believe, but they're capable of deception, and that's the, I think, a basic truth that you have to accept. All governments are capable of deception. Once in power, they want to stay in power, and they do things to stay in power that we're ashamed of later. But that's, that's not supposed to be an American value that might be, you know, so some dictator uh, in Africa or Asia or in the Middle East. That's I those agree kind with of you, but torture has always been an un-American value until this administration. And you've had even Congress on occasion go along with the president to torture people. It's a terrible thing. It's a shame, shameful thing. It's going to hurt us in the future. People are going to torture American prisoners as they have in the past. We should be leading the world against torture. We should be leading the world against landmines. We should be uh, leading the world to try to dispose of nuclear weapons. Uh, we've done none of those things. But you hope that the next administration will be at least closer to doing those things than this last one has for eight years. Okay. Um, what do you think? Uh, who's going to be uh, the next president of the United States? Do you think, really, Obama has a good shot? I hope so. I have friends that have served with him on a board called the Joyce Foundation. Uh, they think the world of him. They think he's idealistic, that he's very, very smart, that his, uh, his approach to the world will be one of cooperation and peace through world law rather than through arrogance. Uh, so I hope he gets elected. Just to end the arrogance of this country toward the rest of the world, it'd be reason enough to get him elected, and I hope he will be. I'm working to help him. Uh, a lot of our friends are. Very good, sir. Uh, we are out of time, but I just wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time uh, to come on okay. the program. Thank you, sir. Well, let, let me say this. Sure. At a time when the media are firing their investigative reporters, there's a whole new wave of people coming to light, the bloggers. 
uh, the, they're on email to each other, and they're investigating facts, and they're putting those facts before the public, and they're affecting the election of members of Congress and the Senate, and hopefully they'll replace uh, what the media have become, which is more interested in advertising revenues than ferreting out the truth with investigative reporters. Yeah. So any program that searches for the truth is doing the country a service. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, the, the only problem with the, uh, you know, it, it is the Internet is extremely important, and if you are not on the Internet, you are way behind time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's only a small percentage of people on the Internet. Most people are not on the Internet, and uh, most people in America, that is, are not on the Internet. And many of those who are on the Internet, probably the last thing they want to do is to go and read a political blog. Uh, that's the problem, because most people, it is much easier to sit in front of uh, your television set to see the news if you watch the news. And if you watch other things, uh, the propaganda is uh, still going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, former congressman from California, uh, Pete McCloskey. Uh, he was attacked viciously by the uh, uh, by APAC. And uh, we go on to, as a matter of fact, I think we're probably going to have Cindy Sheehan on next uh, week. Uh, we have not confirmed that one yet, but uh, she did say yes. So we go into to uh, have Cindy Sheehan. But I have a uh, surprise tonight that uh, um, my son, who, let's go there. He is a yellow belt now. Let's go to camera three and look at that yellow belt he got today. Wow. Let's see some moves. Uh, come on, if somebody, well, what did you learn? What did you uh, learn? Let me see. Let me see what you learned. What about some kicks? There you go. Okay, what about blocking? Okay. And what about attacking? Oh, wow, my goodness. But aren't you supposed to be like doing the yeah thing or, you know, I can't hear, you know, you're supposed to say like yeah when you, uh, when you hit it. Let me hear it. No, no, I didn't hear it. Let me hear it. You don't want to. Don't you like when you, when you practice and don't you like scream? when you make all these moves? How do you do it? Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Amir, who uh, is yellow belt tonight. And I'll tell you what, he's going to uh, move on with this karate thing. And uh, hmm, I need to watch out. He will probably uh, beat me. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, we, uh, oh, here he is. <laughs> okay. Um, this is serious stuff. We're doing this. We're doing what we are doing for this little guy to make sure that he gets a country that looks similar to the country that was given to us by past generations. And uh, we're not doing a good job uh, of it. We're not doing a good job economically. You know, we told you on this show many, many times, about three or four years ago. Uh, to, I'm trying to dig out, by the way, those, uh, um, some of these programs that we had done on the economy where we had shown you exactly what would be happening to the dollar. And we started talking about uh, devaluating the dollar. And uh, we see it now because everything is going up. Everything is going up because the dollar, wa the dollar uh, was devalued uh, a long time ago. And what devalue means is it does not worth the same uh, value over what it did a year, two years, three years ago, four years ago. And uh, we told you that the only war that we can't really defend against and that we will lose is the economic war, and it's right here. Um, go check out what Ron, what Ron Paul is saying about it. Um, he's anticipating catastrophes, as a matter of fact, um, economic catastrophes to uh, take place in the United States. But uh, we bring him to you. You decide. Uh, we don't want to say fair and balanced. We will just say we are bringing you the truth, and you decide if it's fair and balanced. We're not here to. Uh, uh, we're not in a beauty contest, anyhow. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next Thursday.